Boston may be the American city with the most colonial and revolutionary war era heritage. Therefore, it is not surprising that its key locations have evolved into a pilgrimage route for Americans and other people hoping to gain an understanding of that history. But more than that, the Freedom Trail connects with or passes by some of the city's most popular tourist attractions, making it a fantastic introduction to the city as it is now. The majority of Boston's attractions are within walking distance of one another, and the T, America's first subway system, connects the city's key neighborhoods. Check out the top locations in this video. We are going to discuss about top 10 places to visit in Boston, Massachusetts in this video. Subscribe to our channel and let's get started without wasting any time. Number 10. Walk the Freedom Trail 16 of the most significant historical monuments and sites in the city are passed by and entered on the Three Mile Freedom Trail. The line of red bricks in the walkway and the footprints at the street intersections make it simple to follow. Before going to the State House, start by collecting pamphlets on the sites at the Boston Common Visitor Center. You can visit Paul Revere, Samuel Adams, and John Hancock's graves at Old Granary Burying Ground, the graves of Governor John Winthrop, and two Mayflower passengers at King's Chapel Burying Ground, the Old South Meeting House, the Boston Tea Party's birthplace, and the Old State House along the trail. The Boston Massacre took place here, which is also Boston's oldest public structure. Number 9. Fenway Park One of the most famous sports facilities in the nation, Fenway Park is known as America's most beloved ballpark. Even if you're not a sports enthusiast, a tour of it is entertaining and educational. The Boston Red Sox's stadium still resembles what it did on April 20, 1912, when it first opened. The Green Monster, a 37-foot green wall in left field, is one of the park's most iconic features, and other old-time baseball relics, like the manually controlled scoreboard, are still present. Additionally, it has the smallest major league seating capacity, with only 33,871 people, a fact that makes tickets exceedingly scarce. Number 8. Faneuil Hall Faneuil Hall, also referred to as the Cradle of Liberty, was constructed in 1740 to 1742 as a market hall by Huguenot businessman Peter Faneuil and donated to the city on the understanding that it would always be accessible to the general public. Three broad halls, Quincy Market, North Market, and South Market, of the adjacent Faneuil Hall Marketplace, built in the early 19th century, are today home to a bustling collection of boutiques, eateries, and exhibitions. Along with the numerous food stalls, there are shops selling jewelry, clothing, presents, and souvenirs. In good weather, you can find street performers and buskers putting on shows in the square surrounding the market. Some of Bostoners' preferred lunch spots are the market stalls. Number 7. Boston Common and Public Garden Boston Common, the nation's first park and the starting point of the Freedom Trail, is located in the center of the city. Numerous monuments, including the Central Burying Ground from 1756, are located in this sizable open park, which is frequented frequently by people all year long. From November to the middle of March, you may rent skates to use on the Frog Pond. While there you can take in the spring blossoms and fall foliage colors that reflect on their surface. And in the summer, you can watch kids splash around in the wading pool. Along with Victorian-style monuments and statues, including an equestrian statue of George Washington and well-known contemporary bronzes of a family of ducks immortalized in Robert McCloskey's children's book, Make Way for the Ducklings, the 24-acre public garden, which is adjacent to it and is America's oldest botanical garden, can be found on the west side of Charles Street. Number 6. Boston's Museum of Fine Arts the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, one of the top art museums in the nation, is renowned for its collections of Impressionist paintings, artifacts from ancient Egypt, Asian and Persian works of art, and pieces from ancient Greece and the Middle East. The creation of a full American wing to house exceptional collections of American paintings, furniture, decorative arts, folk art, silver, glassware, and design extending from pre-Columbian arts to the Art Deco and Modernist eras is its latest and greatest accomplishment. Number 5. Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum 
The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum is housed in a structure that its eccentric founder fashioned after a Venetian palace from the 15th century. The building's rooms are arranged around a central courtyard with a fountain and four stories of flowering plants. The magnificent 2,500-piece collection of artwork, sculptures, tapestries, decorative arts, books, and manuscripts reflects Mrs. Gardner's preferences and extensive knowledge, and her flamboyance furthers the museum's appeal. There are continuous views of the castle and grounds through transparent walls from practically any place in the new building. After visiting the museum, take a stroll across the vast green fens to uncover a lovely rose garden that is in bloom from June through October. Number 4. Bunker Hill and the U.S. Constitution The U.S. Constitution, often known as Old Ironsides, is the oldest commissioned ship in the U.S. Navy and is still captained and manned by Navy personnel. Visitors are welcome on board, and they can descend below desks to learn more about the ship's construction and operations at sea. The U.S. Constitution Museum, which is located across the dock, gives historical context through engaging displays that depict life two centuries ago on board a Navy ship. The Cassin Young, a World War II destroyer, is another vessel that you can visit here. The Bunker Hill Monument and Museum, also located in the park, is only a short stroll from Charlestown Navy Yard, which is a part of the Boston National Historical Park. Before the fight of Bunker Hill, the first ever pitched battle of the American Revolution, New England soldiers constructed an earthen fort on top of the hill, which is now marked by a 221-foot-tall granite monument. Number 3. The Science Museum this large science museum's exhibits encourage learning via the practical application of science and technology, but it's not just for kids. More than 700 permanent hands-on exhibits that cover physics, biology, chemistry, ecology, zoology, astronomy, computers, and more are augmented by stage presentations and interpreters. Highlights include a fossil found in the Dakota Badlands that is 65 million years old, an electricity dome with ongoing programming, the Butterfly Garden, where you can stroll among free-flying butterflies in a conservatory full of exotic plants, a live animal center, an opportunity to learn weather forecasting alongside local meteorologists, and Computer Place, where you can operate a robot and investigate how your computer stores information. The Mugar Omni Theater boasts a five-story dome screen, and the planetarium offers daily laser and star displays. Number 2. Harvard Square and Harvard Art Museums The oldest university in the United States is Harvard University, which was established in 1636 and is regarded as one of the top academic institutions in the world for a fun and engaging free campus walking tour led by a student who will discuss history, Harvard lore, and personal insight, visit the Harvard Information Center. A tour may also be downloaded from their website. Harvard Yard is located in Harvard Square, a bustling gathering spot for students, townies, and tourists that is home to numerous stores, bookshops, and ice cream parlors, supposedly more than any other American city. The Harvard Art Museums, which house three once independent collections and are each rated highly as significant U.S. art museums, are housed in the Renzo Piano Design Building that is adjacent to Harvard Yard. Number 1. Old North Church and Boston's North End One of Boston's oldest neighborhoods is the North End, which is home to a vibrant Italian community. Paul Revere, a silversmith and prominent campaigner lived there during the American Revolution. The only home owned by a patriot on the Freedom Trail is the Paul Revere House, which is open for tours. He purchased it in 1770 and resided there when he made his infamous ride. You can ascend to Old North Church's tower to see where, in April 1775, lights were strung to warn Paul Revere that British forces were en route to Lexington to detain the Patriot leaders and seize the munitions stockpiles. The church's antique box pews are still present in its stunning white interior. Beyond its significant historic sites, there are many more factors that make the North End a popular destination for travelers. It still maintains an Italian feel and dynamic flair, despite some changes over the years since it was populated by freshly arriving immigrants from Italy. 
Italian bakeries, cafes, restaurants, and businesses may all be found there. The fragrances of preserved olives, freshly roasted coffee, and Italian cheeses fill the air. Today's video ends at this point. Do you like it? Feel free to give your feedback in our comment section below and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.